Okay, let's now go on to the second part of chapter five. So this is video number two. If you haven't watched video number one, please go back and do that. Um, we're going to start at slide 24 talking about fricatives. So just to kind of recap from video one, there's three basic dimensions. We have place, voice, and manner. We're talking about manner, um, both obstruents and sonorants. We've talked about fricatives. Now we're, excuse me, we've talked about stops. Now we're going to move on to fricatives. Okay, so it's an, they're uh, obstruents that result from a partial block of the breath stream, causing turbulence or some type of friction during the production. The velopharynx is closed, so it's lifted. Therefore, all of the airflow is going out the oral cavity, not the nasal. Okay? All right. And let's see here. Okay. So speakers who have difficulty with fricatives tend to be... Um, people with a cleft palate, so the air is escaping through the cleft. Now that's going to be before the cleft is repaired, obviously. Um, but what that means is uh, if there's a cleft of the hard palate, so the roof of our mouth, if there is a cleft there or um, an opening, what that does is leads directly to the nasal cavity. So, of course, the air is escaping through to the nasal cavity, making it difficult to produce those fricatives. And additionally, um, deaf speakers, they don't distinguish the voicing. So, that's another reason why fricatives can be difficult for them. Okay, let's continue on to slide 25. And we're going to start with our uh, first fricative consonant, which is or F, okay? It is a voiceless, meaning we're not using our, we're, our vocal folds, labiodental fricative. So labio, <clears throat> meaning lip, dental meaning teeth. So top teeth on bottom lip to make the fricative. It sounds like fan, offer, leaf, okay? Now, the voiced cognate for that, remember the cognates are um, pairs that are made in the exact same place. The only difference is whether we vibrate our vocal folds or not, or if we're talking to kids, whether or not we turn the motor on. Um, so with the, uh, the V sound, we have voiced labiodental fricative. The only difference is the voicing. Sounds like vote ever have, okay? Next one is going to be referred to as the theta. It's our th sound, the voiceless lingual dental fricative. Lingual meaning tongue, dental meaning teeth. Your tongue goes between your teeth, okay? Um, it sounds like thumb, nothing, and tooth, okay? Kind of over exaggerating there, but I want to make sure you guys can hear that sound. Um, next one is the cognate of the theta, it's the F, and it's the voiced lingual dental fricative. And you can hear this sound in the words this, weather, and breathe. If you haven't noticed, you'll see I gave examples of the sound at the beginning of words, the middle, and the end. So you can hear the difference there. Okay, on to slide 29. We're looking at the fricative s. Okay, this is a voiceless lingual alveolar fricative. Lingual meaning, you've got it, tongue. And alveolar, right at that alveolar ridge. Okay, sorry, that was sticking it out. So we're going to bring it back in. Your tongue's going to sit probably just barely touching the alveolar ridge. Um, and one thing I did show you, so sometimes you'll have children uh, protrude their tongue, and so it becomes more of a S-T-H type sound. Um, and one of the things I'll tell children when we're Scan working on... Completed. Warning. Sorry, guys. Rich Clean Pro detected problems that need your attention. Um... Sorry, there was some scan going on there. Anyways, um, 
what can, what I explain to children when they are sticking their tongue out when producing the S is just reminding them to keep, keep their tongue behind the gates. So if their teeth are the gates, oh, keep your tongue behind your gate. Um, and it's just a fun way to get them to remember to keep their tongue behind their teeth when they make their sound, their S sound. Okay, so this would be in words, sun, missing, moss, okay? Um, and there are two different positions you can make the S. So one is the alveolar S, which is how I made it. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that's where your tongue tip is up. So that's what I was saying, where the tongue tip kind of rests on the alveolar ridge. And then there's also the dental S, which is where the tongue kind of lays right um, behind your bottom teeth. So the tongue tip is down. Either is okay. Uh, just know that you'll want to be able to make both, uh, make an S both ways so that you can figure out when you have patients what way they're making it and how to help them if they're um, doing something else besides one of these. We also have the Z, Z sound. This is on slide 30. So this is just the voiced cognate of the S sound. It's a voiced lingual alveolar fricative, as in the words zoo, razor, size. We have the sh sound. This is referred to as the esh. It's the voiceless lingual palatal fricative. So let's break that down. Lingual meaning tongue. Palatal, up in the palate. So sh. Your tongue kind of will sit close to your palate while you're keeping your tongue back behind your teeth. Shh. Okay, sounds like shoe, wishing, wash. Okay, the next one is referred to as edge. And this one is the voiced cognate of shh. It's a voiced lingual palatal fricative as in the word measure. So it's that zh sound and collage, okay? All right, slide 33, we have the fricative consonant H and H produces the h, h sound. This is a voiceless glottal fricative. So remember there are only two sounds made at the level of the glottis. One is our glot, uh, glottal stop, which we just talked about, the uh-oh, and the other is the H, the huh, H sound, the voiceless glottal fricative. So it's made down here, as in her and a head. For affricates, um, so we've finished up the fricatives. Now when we're talking about affricates, it's a combination of both stop and affricates, or excuse me, stop and fricatives to help produce that affricate sound. So. It's an obstruent produced with a brief constriction of the vocal tract and then a gradual release of airstream. So you have um, a combination of both the slow release of a stop and then the continuation of a fricative, okay? The velopharynx is closed. Again, no nasal sounds. So we're gonna look at the two different affricates. The first one is referred to as etch, and it's our ch sound. It's a voiceless lingual palatal affricate. So let's break that down again. Voiceless meaning we're not using our vocal folds, we're not vibrating them. Lingual meaning tongue, palatal palate, and it's an affricate. So it's a combination of a stop and a fricative. So as in chair, teacher, watch. All right, now you'll see this is going to be the voiced cognate of that. So voiced lingual palatal affricate, and it's referred to as edge, as in um, the word jump, so it's that j sound, badger, edge. All right. Now we're gonna switch gears. We've talked about all of our obstruents, 
uh, stops, fricatives, and affricates. Now we're going to switch and we're going to talk about sonorants. So we have liquids, glides, and nasals. And the first one we're going to talk about is liquids. So it's sonorant sounds produced with a relatively open vocal tract that is only somewhat more restricting than that for L and R. The velopharynx is closed. Again, no nasal sounds there. It's flexible in assuming a vowel or a consonant roll, which is unique to a liquid. And again, it's those R and L sounds. So let's talk about those a little bit more. So with the L, the L sound, la, 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 we have the voiced lingual alveolar uh, liquid. So we have voiced, meaning we're turning on, vibrating those vocal folds, turning on that motor, as I like to explain to um, my patients. So if I have little kids, I might say, um, when I'm talking about turning on my motor, it's vibrating those vocal folds. So if you feel and you say, la, 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 you'll feel it vibrate. We call that a motor. I'm obviously not going to tell a younger child, you know, um, vibrate your vocal folds. So instead, you use different language to make it easier for them. So um, then we have lingual alveolar. So it's your tongue, and it basically you're tapping the alveolar ridge. La, la, la. Okay? Um, sounds like lamp, balloon, and bell. There's two forms of a lateral liquid. So we have a clear or light. It's prevocalic. Prevocalic meaning before pre a vowel, before a vowel. Um, like in the words leaf and list. And then we have a dark, which is a post vocalic. Post meaning after, vocalic meaning vowel, so after a vowel. Like in the word dull, call. So there's some additional arching of the tongue in that velar region. And then we have our R. So the description of this is a voiced lingual palatal liquid. There are three positions you can um, use to make the R sound. And this is going to be a pro or going to be important for you to f understand how to make all three of these sounds um, or make the R in all three of these different ways because when it comes to treating patients um, or transcribing, you want to know how that changes the sound a little bit. Um, and if you're treating patients, you want to know what way they're doing it and maybe try a different way if they're not succeeding in the way that they're attempting the R. So you have other options there. With the tongue tip up position, um, that would be like this. Okay, so your tongue tip is up. Um, you have the retroflex position, which is where you're actually curling the tongue backwards. Okay, and then the tongue tip down. So you're kind of basing it in the roof of your mouth there. Or sorry, in the base of your mouth. Um, we also have the rhotic R, and this comes in the form of um, the sound er. So we have, um, it looks like a three with a little uh, carrot, I guess, after it. That would be like in the word firm. And then we have the er as in flower. We'll talk about those more. Um, but the, the er uh, that looks like an upside down e, it, that's going to be typically at the end of, at the end of words. Um, and the R is in the examples of run, caring, car. Okay, now that we've went over liquids, which are one set of sonorants, we have another set of sonorants, which are called glides. And glides are sonorant sounds produced with a gliding motion of the tongue towards or away from a vowel, the velopharyngeal, uh, port is closed or the velopharynx is closed, so no nasal sounds. Uh, with glides, the sound must be preceded or followed by a vowel. It cannot be a word final position. 
So it cannot be a sound at the end of words. Um, and those sounds are, let's look at slide 41. We have the w as in we in a way. So notice there's none at the end. That's a voiced lingual velar bilabial glide. W. Okay. We also have the y, and it's described with the, um, it looks like a J, the grapheme. Um, however, remember, we have it inside the slash marks, so it's the y sound. It's a voiced lingual palatal glide, and you can find y in words like you and loyal. Okay. Next one is going to be nasal sounds. So this is the last of our sonorants. Uh, and this type of sonorant is produced with the velopharyngeal port open. So rather than lifting up to close it, it's going to go down to keep that velopharyngeal port open. And sounds are going to go through the nasal passage. Um, rem so in the bullet point that says remember mirror demonstration, I don't have a mirror with me, however, um, what I'm going to have you guys do is grab a mirror and put it right here between your lips and your nose, right here, okay? And when you say the sounds, nasal sounds, M, N, or ing, you should be able to see that mirror fog up. And the reason you see it fog up is because... Um, you are, the nasal, excuse me, the uh, sound is going through the nasal cavity, out through the nose, and you would want to see that condensation on the mirror, meaning you're getting that air through the nasal cavity, which is what we want. Um, this is one way to, um, to assess nasality. So if someone was hyponasal, um, it kind of sounds like maybe they have a cold, so they sound really stopped up. Um, they would not have enough airflow going through the nose when they should. So for words that contain the M, N, or ing, they actually may not see condensation on the mirror um, when they should. So let's go over those sounds a little bit more in depth. Again, we have M. So that's the voiced bilabial nasal. So, m, like my coming team. On slide 45, we have the n, n. It's the voiced lingual alveolar nasal, n, n. So the tongue is hitting the alveolar ridge and then coming down in no, many, and green. Next slide, 46, we have ing. So we have the voiced velar, or excuse me, lingual velar nasal. This is referred to as the ang, and it's in sounds like song and ringer, also in the words fishing, that ing. And then lastly, now that we've talked about all of our obstruents and sonorants, I want to go over some syllabics with you. So syllable is the unit of speech which uh, must minimally contain a vowel or a syllabic consonant. Whereas a syllabic is a consonant that functions as a syllable nucleus, can only occur in weaker, unstressed syllables, and it can be the result of a loss of a preceding vowel. So some consonants that can become syllabics are going to be m, n, ing, l, and r, the r, okay? Examples would be in the words button, something, so something, wrinkle, and latin, so instead of latin, latin, okay? So see how the n becomes a syllabic, it becomes a symbol by itself, or syllable by itself, Latin, because there's that glottal stop there, and that looks like that little question mark. The last slide on here does have some helpful websites. There is an app you can download on your iPhone or Android. There is a cost to it, but it is a really good app. 
um, it allows you to um, pick any sound. It will tell you the characteristics of that sound and also play how to say that. Um, in addition, it will do English, Spanish, and German. So if you wanted to hear how it sounds like in different languages, you can do that as well. And the second website is a UCLA website, and that's really nice because it's just a website rather than an app. Um, and that as well will go over vowels and consonants and tell you how to say them and the different characteristics of those phonemes. There are some really great illustrations in your book about how the sounds are made. Um, and there are also helpful links in the um, helpful links section under Chapter 5 module that you'll, you'll find lots of resources there. So please use these resources. Um, transcription can be really hard at first. It's a lot of information all at once. Um, so please use the resources and let me know if you have any questions. Okay, have a great night.